Today is June 25th, 2023. Welcome to Native Calgarian. Oki, Naganago, Mekoche, Chestokomaki, or Dekots, Nogotine, Siku. Hi, my name is Red Thunder Woman. My married English name is Michelle Robinson, and I use she and her pronouns. My Dene lineage roots me in the land of the Great Bear Lake tribe in Treaty 11. My name, uh, Dekots, Nogot, Siku, is in Satu Dene. My people wore rabbit skin, so it's been referred to as the land is the hair people. Um, I'm a native to Turtle Island, and my Dene Nation is a visitor to this area of Klincho Tene Indahe and Satu Dene, meaning many big dog town, named after the Calgary Stampede. I was born in Calgary, or in Blackfoot, Mokinstis, as Michelle Elliott, an English name which has afforded me privilege in an English colonial world. My mother is Northern Slavey Dene or Satu Dene, but my Indian Act and Post status card by the Canadian government says Yellow Knives Dene. Through my father, I am a daughter of the Mayflower and a daughter of the American Revolution while having an Indian Act and Post status card, which is a colonial construct by Canadian policies meant to divide Indigenous peoples' inherent rights. Indigenous Two-Spirit or the Indigenous 2 LGBTQ plus community and Indigenous women are at the bottom of the Canadian socioeconomic ladder because of colonial trauma, imposed poverty, racism, gendered violence, and land theft. I don't speak on behalf of all Indigenous, but I share my journey as I walk the red road. As a Denny woman who has attempted to run for these harmful colonial parties, spent money to be at expensive conventions, left my home to travel to those conventions just to vote on incomplete policies that still allow for the incarceration and denial of justice, the denial of health services, racism, colonial trauma, and genocide of Indigenous and Black peoples, I have worked to continue reports to advocate for and attempt to work within these systems meant to harm me and my community. I think of all of this today and I hope we honor the many Indigenous lives lost for the so-called country named Canada. I hope you see your role in the importance of stopping that harm and as a citizen see your role in reconciliation and as a treaty partner. Pride Month should never just be one month. It is important to understand that the straight agenda and gendered violence was and is forced on this land by Christian outsiders. Land acknowledgements are critical for creating a safer space for Indigenous, as well as honoring the host as a guest and acknowledging your role as a treaty partner in a so-called time of reconciliation. Uh, my friend Matt just called from Toronto. Today was Toronto's Pride, and it was a ton of fun, it sounds like, for him and many others. He's going to be a guest talking about what it was like for him, and i um, really excited to have him on it's important that land acknowledgements have meaning. I encourage everyone to introduce themselves with an acknowledgement of their ancestors' story of displacement and how you perceive your role as a treaty partner, a citizen of Canada, a refugee, or other land displacement so we as Indigenous people know how safe you are to be around. If you won't pronounce your local Indigenous uh, people's names, if you won't say your pronouns, your story of origin, won't acknowledge stolen lands, won't acknowledge imposed economic oppression or your role in reconciliation, I determine how safe you are to be around my community, my family, and myself. Understanding land acknowledgements and their importance is Indigenous 101 because it immediately addresses colonialism, oppression dynamics, broken treaties, and lies taught today in Canadian schools nationally. That's why settlers and those who call themselves native Calgarians or whatever town you're from, show me you have no Indigenous 101 understanding. Jesse Winty's book Unreconciled explains this perfectly, as do many other Indigenous authored books. Land Back is a movement that could save the planet from climate change created by colonialism, but it would be a part of treaty partnership, part of meaningful reconciliation, and honoring global initiatives like the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. I honor the Blackfoot as the elders and members have been so kind to me on my Red Road journey. Elder Red Crane taught me how to pronounce my spirit name in Blackfoot, and Leonard Kenny taught me how to pronounce my name in Satu Dene. My humblest apologies to the Blackfoot and Dene elders and language keepers as I learn proper pronunciation. I'm speaking to you on the lands of the Nitsitapi, which is the Blackfoot Confederacy. The Blackfoot South, the imposed U.S. Canadian border are the Blackfeet, and north of the border are the Siksika, Gainai, and Bogani of the Confederacy. These lands are Treaty 7, signed September 22, 1877, which then included the Wesley Chiniki, Bears Paw, or Good Stony uh, nations of the, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take wheel that back. Let's let's say this again. The Wesley slash Good Stony Nation. 
the Chiniki and the Beresfa nations of the Stony Nations and the Dene from Sutina. I acknowledge all First Nation, Métis, Inuit, status and non-status across Turtle Island as the keepers of these lands, all non-Indigenous or treaty partners with the government signing on your behalf. My Patreon account is Native Calgarian, where you can pledge and support. Thank you, previous donors, for showing your support. If you value listening or watching and can afford to give, thank you. For those who cannot afford to give, I'd love to hear from you at nativeyyc at gmail.com, where you can send in your comments or your questions. Also, giving a review helps whatever medium you're listening from. I have a YouTube channel that you can go and subscribe, and you can go to nativecalgarian.com for the latest podcasts and pin posts on social media. So I'm really excited today because I was actually a guest on my friend Dave's uh, podcast. So I also have a cough from weeks of this now from when it got really smoky here in Calgary. I've gotten chest x-rays done and I've gone through a round of antibiotics. So, you know, unfortunately it just, it's here. I don't know what to do about it. Sound like a smoker the rest of my life, I guess. Anyway. I've been lucky enough to be a guest on my friend Dave's podcast, and it's called Voices in Recovery Podcast. It's on Spotify, iTunes, Google uh, Podcasts, etc. And you can go to their YouTube channel called Freedom's Path Recovery Society for meditations, podcasts, and educational videos. If you wish to make a donation to their charity, um, what you're supporting is counseling programs, uh, group workshops, meditation, family support grief support and funeral services, podcast protection and training for the facilitators and counselors. I've actually been lucky enough to be one of them as a part of the Mending Broken Hearts. So donations can be made on their website at freedomspathrecoverysociety.ca or you can e-transfer to info at freedomspathrecoverysociety.ca. So uh, the thing about his podcast is that Uh, They recorded my daughter doing the land acknowledgement years ago. And uh, my my brother, who is actually a complete non-native, just my father and I, we we share the same father. Um, His music is actually featured on both. So it's uh, really exciting to me to have you listen to Dave and I. I hope that you learn something. I hope you you, you hear it in a different way and uh, maybe get to know a little more about who I am and what I do. It's interesting when you get interviewed by other people. Um, But I do think it's important that a lot has changed since that interview. And uh, Adora Newfair has now been charged with more uh, crimes. I... I, I'm really angry and frustrated because um, as Indigenous people who are so very unfairly targeted time and time again, uh, we can never seem to prove hate crimes. And yet Adora, um, you know, trying to defend children against a hate group, she is getting charged with hate. It's so upsetting and it's so frustrating to me. So I, I'm, I have the link. I encourage people to uh, donate to them uh, the Calgary YYC Black Lives Matter movement because uh, both Adora and Taylor McNally are being unfairly targeted by the justice system. And, um, you know, I talk about missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, two-spirit. I talk about how unfair the justice system is towards us. So for me, it's really incredibly frustrating knowing where we're at here in Calgary and knowing the forces against uh, equity seeking groups, frankly. It's disappointing that most Calgarians, most Albertans and most Canadians just seem to be a-okay with the status quo. And I wish that people would wake up and do a lot more and demand a lot more accountability. Um, Something that's been very hard on my heart the last few weeks is the amount of people that are indigenous in care that are just being abused by the system. And uh, there's two very unique um, issues going on here in Calgary that I can't publicly speak about yet. But what I do know is that there has been a public video going around showing a young man who was, um, in my opinion, tortured by Saskatoon police, or maybe it was Regina police, it was in Saskatchewan. And, um, you know, he's just a young boy. And they were telling him this is his fault and doing all of the uh, awful things that they do to to Indigenous boys. 
And again, even though I share it, for some reason, my listeners can't seem to find it. So I'm going to share that link as well in the hopes that people will watch it and people will demand um, more accountability from the, the system in general. Our people are literally dying in the system. We are constantly um, getting new trauma, colonial trauma from colonial violence. And somehow Canadians are just a-okay with it. I know you like our land. I know you like our resources. And I know you like the money that comes from it. But is there not any part of you inside that says this is morally in, uh, wrong anywhere? When, when are these folks that are a part of the system going to stop this type of behavior? I, I, I just, I think so many people are immoral. I'll never forgive Canada for, for these things that they do to our people. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the podcast and I will do my exit at the end and we'll chat soon. Thanks for listening, folks. Welcome to the Voices in Recovery podcast. Voices in Recovery is produced by Freedom's Path Recovery Society, a registered Canadian charity. If you enjoy the podcast, please consider a donation at www.freedomspathrecoverysociety.ca. All donations go directly to assisting Freedom's Path in providing services free of charge and helps us keep the podcast going. We are grateful for any and all donations. This podcast discusses difficult topics such as childhood abuse, drug and alcohol use, sexuality, sexualized trauma, and more. If you are under the age of 18, please speak with your legal guardian prior to listening. The opinions expressed during the podcast are those of the individual and not those of Voices in Recovery or Freedom's Path Recovery Society. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy the podcast. This podcast is being recorded on the traditional land of the Blackfoot Confederacy. This consists of the Kainai, Pekani, Siksika, and the Blackfeet in the U.S. We acknowledge the Stony Nakoda, which consists of the Bearspaw, Morley, and Chinooki. We acknowledge the Satuna, who are Dene, and the Métis, Inuit, status, and non-status from all of Turtle Island, and those who are visiting. We are all treaty people. Today, we have Michelle here, Michelle Robinson, and it is an honor always to be just, to be able to hang out. Like I do, I just feel like, wow, I'm so lucky. Well, you know? just so you know, I feel exactly the same. I love oh. hanging out with you, Dave. Cool. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Because, well, I mean, I don't know what to say to that. That's, I'm blushing. I'll just go like this. I'll, just, <laughs> I'll wave it off. Um, there is so much going on in our province. Yeah. And like, I, I watch your pages and stuff like that. Obviously, I listen to podcasts when I can. Yep. Um, and there's just so much information in them um, because you have the Native Calgarian pod, podcast. That's right. Right. Um, and so if you're interested out there, check it out. It's amazing. So many wonderful guests. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'm curious if, if you would be able to or interested in just talking about, first of all, the election. Sure. Like, did you see the picture of the ministers that Danielle Smith chose? Yes. Am I the only one who thought it looked pretty white? Oh, it's pretty white. <laughs> it's, that's pretty white. Was there like two females? And was there any people of color? Yeah, I think they have like four women and like four people of color, like, oh and that's it. And, the, and you know, I, a lot of people, they, when they look at me, they go, you're not native. So like the one guy that they have that, that is native, mm. I don't know if people would do the same thing to him too. So, oh, okay, yeah, so he might yeah. be, yeah. I just yeah. saw that picture yesterday and it, yeah. it kind of put the whole thing in perspective for me. I was like, yeah. oh, that's why they got back in. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I have a non-Indigenous uncle that outright said, I can't vote NDP because they're pro-Indigenous which is like a nice way of saying I'm anti-human rights for Indigenous. So, wow. yeah, so that, that's just, uh, that's still Alberta, yeah. you know, and this is my so-called family, you know. Wow. Yeah. And, yeah. and it hits close to home, like, hey, with that? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, uh, I, I just have, because half of, my dad is white. Yeah. And my stepmother is white. Yeah. So my family is predominantly white mm -hmm. on, on that side. And then, on with my mom, who's uh, Satu Dene, you know, obviously that side of the family is just like, whatever, we just got to survive, mm -hmm. right? So they don't really like to talk politics too much because mm -hmm. it usually is very divisive. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I, I respectfully understand that. And, um, you know, I really identify as a stay-at-home mm -hmm. mom. So uh, I use my, my time at home politically in the mm -hmm. best way I can to 
try to tackle systemic racism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are, are you, because um, I know you're with the Liberal Party, right? Yeah, federally I am with federally, the Liberal yeah. Party, yeah. Um, what's it look like for liberals in Alberta? Because like, I, honestly, when it comes to the provincial level, yeah. it doesn't seem like there's, there's much there. Okay, I'll give a quick background. Yeah. So I was an Alberta Liberal yeah. um, member for for some time. Uh, the first uh, leader with Raj Sherman, he didn't like me. Uh, with David Kahn, he's such a wonderful human being. Mm -hmm. So he's a, a brown queer man and so welcoming to, oh, because he's also an Aboriginal lawyer, mm -hmm. so he understood Indigenous issues, so he really respected my voice and, and being mm -hmm. a part of the party. And then uh, the last one, John Rogovine, he, um, he does not, psh, no relationship there. So, okay. yeah, um, so with the last election, I helped the NDP. Okay. I had a friend uh, named Marilyn Northpagan, mm -hmm. and she was she won the uh, uh, Calgary Klein. So that nomination race. I love Marilyn. I love her too. Yeah. So, um, so I tried to help her um, through that, and then uh, when when they broke apart, the NDP and Marilyn Northpagan, um, I just kind of took some time. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we got a little closer, I, I volunteered with Rosman Valencia in my area. A okay. uh, real wonderful Filipino mm -hmm. queer teacher. Uh, I'm really sad and disappointed he lost, yeah. but um, my feet hurt for three days after election day because... Uh, I saw that. You were out there beating the pavement. Yeah. Darn right I mm -hmm. was because, uh, you know, it, for a lot of Canadians, they're really unaware how... Um, colonial politics works mm -hmm. and it's a simple formula it's for every uh, party and it doesn't change it's you identify who your voters are you ask them if they want to volunteer put up a sign mm -hmm. yeah ask them if they voted on election day mm -hmm. and that's that's it yeah. so it doesn't matter what color you're wearing that's the program for political science mm -hmm. so um, so that's what, when I was an Alberta ndp -er, I would have my data and work with that. We do the same thing with the Liberals federally, mm -hmm. what's called Liberal List. So once you have your software, you're hitting the streets or on the phones, whatever mm -hmm. you're comfortable doing. And um, yeah, so that's, that's just it. And I also ran um, for the Municipal uh, for Ward 10, and then I ran for the Alberta Liberal Party, mm -hmm. and then this election I did not run. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so you're not going to run, are you going to run again? I'm not sure if I would run again yeah. because, uh, you know, the best way to support a candidate is obviously endorse them if mm -hmm. you like them. Yeah. And when people don't step and endorse, it's such an insult, mm -hmm. and especially if they had the audacity to ask you to run. Yeah. Um, you know, you volunteer your time. Have you experienced that before, obviously? You know what? That was my biggest slap in the face when I first ran municipally. Mm -hmm. All the very people who encouraged me to run, they didn't volunteer, they didn't donate, donate they didn't endorse. Mm -hmm. And I was just really uh, disappointed with the very people who asked me to run. That's so, um, but that said, you know, I had some, some good help. There was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, I, I really feel every single Canadian should run. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because then that way, if you do that work, you have a respect for people trying to run, yeah. right? And you, we have a mutual friend that mm -hmm. we know in the Green Party that ran. Yeah. And uh, every time she runs, she has to go through the same protocols. Okay. And um, She you know, ran again, didn't she? In yeah. Red Deer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I saw that. Yep. So, you know, for folks who don't run, they don't know the process. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then when you door knock and you come to the average person and they don't know the difference between municipal, federal, or provincial, you know, like you really get an idea of how ignorant the data or the, the mm -hmm. voter base really is, yeah. right? And so you have to try to connect to them on an issue that might matter mm -hmm. to them. But that said, when they see this, they may not necessarily... Um, resonate to that mm -hmm. so you know that's another thing that uh, people don't understand is like when I talk about bias it's so strong 
Oh. And I think every woman that would be listening to this podcast would know exactly what I'm talking about when you walk into a room and r immediately they go from a woman to a man, immediately, mm -hmm. right? Or um, if you're a person of color and mm -hmm. the people automatically go to the white person. Like that's just inherent bias, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's just going off the gate. It's interesting because yeah. I've learned so much from you. One of the things is just that, is sure. that like... Because I, I saw this, uh, it was a post for, I can't remember, I, won't, I wouldn't name the organization anyway. Sure. But, because it's not really my job. And it was probably just a real, they'll just say it was a faux pas. Sure. But they showed pictures of groups, small groups meeting, and yep. every group was pointed towards a white man. Yep, absolutely. Or so, a white woman. And back to the UCP winning yeah. and seeing that picture of yeah. them. You know, that's typically the way it works. And yeah. it was it's a really sad reality, but in my own head, yeah. um, we have a, a by-election coming up um, federally. Mm -hmm. So there was a conservative in the riding of Calgary Heritage that stepped down. So the conservative, they know who their candidate is. Mm -hmm. I know who my candidate is. And I'm sad to say because he has a name on the conservative side that's hard to pronounce, mm -hmm. clearly not white. Our guy is white. Mm -hmm. I hate to say it, but I'm like, well, we already are at an advantage in that area. Mm -hmm. And that that just shows the bias, <sighs> yeah. right? Um, so that's why it's really important to acknowledge that. Now, mm -hmm. he may win because he's a conservative and they need a person of color. Mm -hmm. um, who knows? But we'll, and, and I'd love to be proven wrong, but at the same time, that area, uh, part of it just went orange provincially. So mm -hmm. we know there's a voter base out there of, yeah. of progressives. Mm -hmm. And so if we can find them and ID them and get them to commit to voting, mm -hmm. we can win too. And that, you know, that's the thing about being a, an Alberta liberal is that a lot of folks go, oh, you're a conservative country. And the truth is, is we have tons of uh, progressives mm -hmm. out here, even rurally, uh, as one friend said, uh, you know, one in three were voting NDP. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it's just a matter of IDing them, getting mm -hmm. them to the polls. Um, I'm a big believer in special ballot, advanced mm -hmm. polls, because then on election day, we're not wasting our time with people who, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe are going to vote or whichever. Like the sooner you vote, the sooner we can cross you off our list. Mm -hmm. And that's for every party. So yeah. if you're a, I'm a proud conservative, then do that for your conservative friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's so it's so crazy when you talk about bias and it's just how sure. biased we are, right? Like, right. And and as a white person, like how I catch myself doing these stupid things that that aren't like beneficial to anyone, right? Like, but I but it is different now being able to notice when like those pictures, for example. Like when I looked at that, I was like, did I just see that right? So I had to look at it again, yep. and I saw it right, and I was like okay, like, this is, this is a real thing. Like, every time I get reminded of how, like, when you guys went through stuff with, in, with the hotel, right, out oh. in Sylvan Lake, yeah. like, those things, for a white person, we will never experience that. Yeah. And we will never understand why it's happening. Yeah, absolutely. Right? But what will happen to us is we'll get told the reason by the authorities. The authorities will explain to us what, what you guys had done to warrant them kicking you out. Or yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. and so we'll never get the right story. Totally. Right. Un until like we swallow our bullshit. Yeah. And just listen, right? Like to to find out that, like when we when we did that mending broken hearts, I'll never forget this because you and a couple other members of the group were talking about this very specific thing, mm -hmm. when walking into a store, of all things, something we have most of us have to do like once or twice a week. Yeah. Right. If not more than that. Sure. But. I noticed it right away. As soon as I left, I got went to the gas station to drive home, and right in the gas station, yeah, we're like there's a lineup, but the, the woman with her children, indigenous woman with children, was waiting up front, and they kept skipping over her. Yeah, and then I was like, I'm not going. Like, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're gonna have to help her first. Like, I'm not going. Like, yeah. there's no way, right? Like. Yep. But this stuff happens every day. Every day. Like all day long. All the time, and that's why. Uh, like I was just. You know, I just want to tell your your listeners, mm -hmm. like folks like me who show up in non-Indigenous circles, we experience extreme fatigue mm -hmm. dealing with ignorance, mm -hmm. point blank. And people who even think they're progressive mm -hmm. are very ignorant. Um, I was just at two different meetings and people kept saying, 
oh, you know, what happened to Indigenous people was horrible. And I, I stop them and I say, is horrible. Yeah. It's today. It's right now. Today, there is a mother giving birth at Peter Lougheed with social services and a cop waiting to steal that child. Today. Mm. Right? And that's across mm. the country today. Yeah. And that's the impetus of what got me mm -hmm. uh, very political was the, the way I was treated at Peter Lougheed. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, uh, rest in peace, uh, Manmi Bular, he was my representative and we got midwifery funded in 2008 on uh, Midwife Day, which is May 5th. Yeah. And uh, it's right in the Haskar, uh, well, or the minutes of, of the legislature. Um, you know that story. Mm. Not a, it's not my whole story or, or elaborate at all, yeah. but it, I put that in my daughter's birth story to try to make up for what had happened up to that moment. Mm. So you know, and then once because uh, Man Meat uh, was a progressive conservative at the time, mm -hmm. and I always asked him why he was wearing a blue coat, and he said, "Cause I can get more done wearing blue." Mm. And I'm like, oh, "He should be red." So mm. we used to joke a lot with each other, and uh, then when he passed. Um, on the on the highway, he got into a, a car crash. Mm. Uh, he stopped oh, for that somebody. Was him, Mom. That was my my MLA. Yeah, oh. yeah. He had this great slogan for his campaign, and he would say, "With great beard comes great responsibility." <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Darcy. Yeah. <laughs> with great beard. Right. Yeah, and <laughs> you know, Darcy, he was a stinker. He actually turned down a picture with Man Meat. Really. <clears throat> Because they have a very similar beard, right? Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I just I wish we would have taken that picture for no other reason than I would have framed it. And put I wish it up. Darcy would have too. Yeah, yeah. I really do, so, Darcy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, would you like a coffee? Uh, no, thank okay. you. I, I, well, maybe I'll just see if I brought my water in because... Yeah, um, I was sitting here going, man, I know you love coffee. I don't want to... You know what? I just was given some Turkish coffee and I'm just vibrating. Oh. Yeah, because I, like, it is strong. Strong stuff. It is strong. Excellent. Yeah, so, yeah, but maybe I should grab a water in case I end up having a I'll get you coughing water. fit. Thank yeah, you. No problem. But, yeah, um, so, okay, so... I, it's amazing. I just hit, this just hit me. And obviously I'm stammering over my words because it's like rattling around my brain. Sure. When you said red, I was like, wait a minute. That's why people think liberalism is communism. Like it just hit me because they think that Trudeau's a communist, right? Like, and is that, is that part of the problem? Because in the States, better dead than red. Wow. Right? Yeah. You know, um, so just to give people history, my white uh, grandfather served in the military and um, he was very anti-communist. Mm. But the propaganda that has happened in the last 10 years has really, mm -hmm. wow, ramped right up to the point that anything not um, conservative is considered, and I would even say right, right wing mm -hmm. is considered communist. And so like for folks who maybe don't have an education, mm -hmm. maybe it's easy to say that, but at the end of the day, Rachel Notley, she's actually right of center. Mm -hmm. You know, the federal liberals are actually right of center. Yeah. So when, when people call us even left wing or, or Rachel mm -hmm. Notley left wing, I just shake my head and know, unfortunately, that's an ignorant yeah. person. Yeah. And they don't really understand politics and they believe some lie that they heard on mm -hmm. some wing nut podcast or, or whatever yeah. talking point they're hearing this from. And sadly now, the federal uh, conservatives have figured out this is a popular opinion, mm -hmm. as has Daniel Smith, and they were, they're running with it. And uh, I think it's really unfortunate that our, our democracy is being attacked. And just to give your, your listeners perspective, this week alone, um, a conservative appointed gener governor general stepped down and said this atmosphere is so partisan mm -hmm. it, it is not in the best interest of Canada's security mm -hmm. so literally the federal conservatives are hurting our democracy so badly yeah. that our, their own appointed governor general is like this I'm is out. this is not helping us mm -hmm. as a country so uh, our our democracy is in crisis thanks yeah. to these uh, really far-right extremist views yeah and it's it's a real shame because you know people say that they hate Trudeau or they hate you know government interference but you know right now we have raging wildfires 
without an infrastructure of firefighters. It's yeah. always been volunteer because, well, at least we were honoring not having government involvement, huh? <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, well, the whole forest burned down. Yep. Way to go, guys. So, you know, um, and people, they, they take it so extreme. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're in a, a building. So without government, there wouldn't be a survey here. Mm -hmm. Without government, there wouldn't have been a code here to build a building. Mm -hmm. Without government, there wouldn't be electricity in these and, and mm -hmm. pipes for water and for electricity. Mm -hmm. like, people forget what government does. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the paint on the walls is government regulated mm -hmm. so that we're not bringing in really bad fumes mm -hmm. or lead-based paint or whatever. You know, so Which I you think know people, these churches did. You really forget the importance <laughs> of having government oversight yeah. because like, and, and Darcy and I were talking about a doctor who it was an American who moved over to Europe because they actually have standards and government intervention mm -hmm. on the quality of their food. When an American moves, they realize, hey, we have better quality food over here, mm -hmm. you know, because it's just Monta like uh, all corporations rule in North America yeah. to the point we're sick mm -hmm. because it makes somebody else some money. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really, really disappointing and disheartening and shows the lack of understanding of how the world works when yeah. people really take it to an extreme. I agree. Like it's the that polarization of issues that oftentimes have there's there's just that's not real yeah you, there's rarely is there just two things to choose from yeah like and and when we narrow it down to that I, I believe this is just my opinion but I believe it's out of fear and like trying not to lose stuff right mm -hmm. like we go to our basic instinct yeah you know when we and to even think you're gonna lose stuff you have to be like two sides only there's no gray area there Right? Yeah. Like it's either you have or you don't. Yeah. And the truth is that's not how this is. Like, cause there's a whole declining portion in the middle. Yeah. Right. The, where, where it's like now, now there's this separation and maybe it's always existed. I shouldn't say now there's this cause it has yeah. existed for a long time, Yeah. but it seems very prevalent. Yeah. Right. Like very much like you can't say like, I can't be a liberal if I think one way about something. Right. Like, and it's like, well, no, I, I am liberal. Like, yeah. there's no question I'm liberal because sure. I don't want, I don't mind governments doing stuff. Like, yeah. we've always had governments doing stuff. I have no, there's no illusion. I didn't think like, but then again, I don't think that I made myself, right? Sure, sure. I don't think that I am a self-made <clears throat> David, right? Like, I don't yeah. believe that in any part of me. Sure. Right? I'm a family-made David. I'm a friend-made David. Sure. Like, there's, there, and part of that is the country that I grew up in. Oh. Right, 100%. was allowing me to do these things. A hundred percent. So I don't get it, but I don't get that about us individually either. How we will like or hate somebody. Sure. Instead of like just accept somebody. Yeah. And be like, you know what? I don't have to like everything about you. Right. To like you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like you know, government used to be a lot more friendly on on discourse. So mm -hmm. I'll give an example of, uh, you know, Justin actually told this story. I don't know, 10 years ago maybe, and he talked about being in a in a room like at, at a cafeteria with his dad and with some conservative MPs, and a conservative MP said something to him, and he went back a, you know, witty remark, and his dad scolded him, mm. and he reminded him that um, you know this is my colleague, this is my friend, mm -hmm. and uh, from and Justin learned a really important lesson at that moment, and he was really proud to tell everybody mm -hmm. of how public discourse used to be. Um, prior to Harper, there used to be if if the Green Party got five percent of the vote, then they would get uh, the same funding as any party in Canada. Mm -hmm. So I used to vote Green, if so, because I knew that my vote mattered. If, if I helped that 5% of the, of the Greens mm -hmm. nationally, then they would get their public funding. Unfortunately, Harper cut that. And I think mm -hmm. that that's an example where, um, you know, we could have more healthy discourse. Mm -hmm. Because I, I would argue, and my own daughter has looked up to Elizabeth May her entire career, mm -hmm. um, is that she, she brings so much to the table on public discourse. Mm -hmm. And um, what if we had more? 
Elizabeth Mays mm -hmm. to talk about the importance of things. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, Stefan Dion had a, a wonderful green economy that we brought mm -hmm. in lots of green people into the Liberal Party because of that. Yeah. Um, you know, and I ran provincially knowing at the UN level that all the policies were changing and if I didn't step up, mm -hmm. Alberta would be left behind. Mm -hmm. And I'm born and raised here, of course I want to mm -hmm. aid in helping the province move forward. But you know, that wasn't what the voters wanted and that propaganda really was strong and loud. Mm -hmm. And it was really unfortunate because um, today we're really suffering the conf uh, consequences mm -hmm. of not having you know, a David Kahn, David Swan in the, mm -hmm. in the legislature to give that, you know, healthy debate. Yeah. Because we just don't have that. And um, it, it's disappointing. I'm not going to lie. It's not, a, it's, it's disappointing, but I'm not surprised, right? Because the average person, we don't, we don't make space for healthy debate either. No. We're, we're not interested, right? Like, yep. Yep. We, we go into silos. Yep. Like, in our personal, and I know I'm guilty, guilty sure. of it for sure. I for gravitate sure. towards where where I don't have to be fatigued, as you mentioned, right? Sure. Like, but when I do go to places where I do get fatigued, it's because there's that open, and then I realize exactly what happens is that, oh, I just need more discourse, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? I don't need less discourse, I need more yep. to make it more normalized, right? That totally. It's okay if we don't agree, yep. because I really believe that. Yep. Like, I just do, I, I, and we're not, we're not talking about like some of the conspiracy theorists go down the rabbit hole of, oh, so you like pedophiles and no, you morons. It's not like that. It's not one way or the other. It's right? just that discourse is so wild to me right? because as an indigenous person who has witnessed so much abuse from mm -hmm. police, from priests, from religion, mm -hmm. from authority, uh, social workers who've literally raped our children, mm -hmm. you know, from the start of people coming here. It is like Pocahontas is a child, an mm -hmm. indigenous woman, like indigenous girl, that real story. Mm -hmm. So like the, the moment they came here, they introduced evil, Satan, mm -hmm. and pedophilia. Mm -hmm. So for me, this discourse of what they're trying to say is like, are you just in so much denial of mm -hmm. what you guys have done that this is your way of trying to you know, distance yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but from my point of view, it's just the conversation so wild that I, I don't know how they believe themselves saying it, mm -hmm. let alone out loud in a sentence, let alone having other people go nodding. Good like, job. Like, I, I, I'm like, <laughs> like what world, like what drug do you yeah. have to be on for that to make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's what happens when you've <clears throat> never taken any drugs. Maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah. It's so, yeah. It's it's hard listening to that discourse. That's tough. Yeah, <coughs> it is because it's like the everything gets wrapped up in this bubble, and it's not the way it is. No, right. Um, Humans not at are all. more complex than that. A hundred percent. And you know, before the settlers came and imposed their straight agenda, mm -hmm. like we have words for every single indigenous language mm -hmm. on what two spirit is, yeah. and yet. This is such a hard conversation for mm -hmm. settlers to understand because they're like, oh, what, you still exist? And it's like, yep, we're still here. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Oh, you would be shocked at the level of ignorance, even in so-called progressive circles. Mm -hmm. I just came from a so-called progressive meeting from a non-Indigenous group. And, you know, it is, it is racial battle fatigue to listen to mm -hmm. other people's concepts of what we are or not. And, um, well, and other people's concepts of what you need, right? Like how tired is how tiring is that? I, I, on my podcast, I just basically say like if you haven't mm. read the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report, if you haven't read the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women National mm. Inquiry, there's no point in us even starting this conversation mm. yeah. because like we are in totally different worlds of yeah. understanding life and. Um, but that said, like I uh, obviously show up at these meetings and, mm -hmm. and give people the benefit of the doubt and, um, you know, encourage them to mm -hmm. join my book club, join a book club, read an Indigenous authored book. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's so many ways uh, an Indigenous podcast, an mm -hmm. Indigenous film, like there's so many ways to learn from mm -hmm. us. At this point, it is willful ignorance because it is 2023. Yep. In 1996... The Truth and uh, the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples report came out. Mm -hmm. That is public. 
So for folks to not know mm -hmm. at this point, it is willful. Totally. It's yeah. like, uh, I don't want to hear about it <clears throat> kind of stuff, right? Like it's not interesting to me for whatever reason. And yeah. But you mentioned Two-Spirit, and that was another thing I would like to talk to you about if you're sure, willing. Sure, sure. Was the, um, is the, stu the drag stuff going on right now? I, I have a real hard time understanding what people's problem with this is. Like, yeah. And wh where they're making these connections is probably more about what we were talking about earlier, how they're connecting these dots to somehow transgender people being pedophiles. Like, I don't understand where people are getting this information. You know, I, and I, I think it's historical in the mm. sense that... Um, sure sounds know, like it. ...so-called good Christians um, oh. in, the, in the mental health DSM mm -hmm. said that being LGBTQ2 plus was um, sexual deviance. So from my point of view, I think you have a lot of holdovers for yeah. folks that are unwilling, even mm -hmm. after their children commit suicide, you know, mm -hmm. not wanting to piece it together and not yeah. wanting to feel responsible, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, I remember growing up in Alberta in the 80s and I remember when WAM broke up and my heart was broken and um, all the heterosexuals around me thought it was hysterically funny and mm. uh, really made fun of that. And then I knew, um, you know, we, we got, I feel like I had a more liberal sexual education upbringing than what is the mm -hmm. current status quo. Because yeah. I started to understand what birth control was, etc. Mm. And, uh, and knew that that was important. Mm. Um, I remember one of our uh, sexual ed sex ed questions that we had to go home and ask our parents was if I got pregnant or if you got someone pregnant what would you do mm. and my dad said well adult decisions equal adult consequences and out the door you'd go and I went to school the next day and I told them that's what my dad said and nobody believed me mm. so I knew in that moment my dad would reject me and my my own peers would not mm. believe me I knew in that moment so there's a little girl in Sylvan Lake that knew if I didn't figure out a way to make myself to Calgary to get an abortion, I'd be toast. Mm -hmm. And I knew that then from that one question that I got as a homework assignment in, I don't know, grade seven or eight or something, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and that really scared me. And I would probably argue that was the moment I became a liberal without knowing I was a liberal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because... I knew growing up watching uh, women get beaten, children get beaten, that I knew, um, and, and this was in a non-Indigenous community, it was mm -hmm. just totally acceptable to be awful to children and women, yeah. that I didn't have a lot of choices and, and options in life as mm -hmm. a woman, and that my role was to birth babies, and it, hopefully I caught a guy who didn't beat the crap out of me. Yeah, That was like... If I can do that, then I've won. Mm -hmm. And that's really sad bar, but that was what it was like growing up in Alberta yeah. in the 80s and 90s, so. That's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not unbelievable, I shouldn't say that. Yeah. It's just, for my brain, it's yeah. just like wild, man. That wasn't that long ago. No, not at know? all, not at all. But I just learned a few years ago that residential schools ended in that time frame. Yeah. Which is not that long ago. No, so just to give people perspective, like I graduated high school in a non-Indigenous community mm -hmm. in 1994. And the last residential school officially in the TRC closed in 1996. We learned with the 781 in Cowisness First Nation that that one didn't close until 1997. Mm -hmm. And there's one up in uh, uh, now, none of it, that was the oh, same thing, didn't close mm -hmm. until 1997. So just to give people perspective, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a lot of people have assumed I've gotten a post-secondary education. And I mean, my husband and I, we've been in debt since I went to SAIT to take some night courses mm -hmm. uh, ever since. And, uh, you know, this concept that card-carrying uh, status people get a free ride and a free education, like, I, I I wish people understood that's propaganda that people tell themselves mm -hmm. in order to feel good about the reality of Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, the reality of Canada is kind of like the reality of, say, the church. Yeah. If you really want it, because they're, they're pretty close. Yeah. Right? The history, historically, yeah. they've run parallel to yeah. each other, if not over each other's toes and such. Yeah. Like, it's, I, I don't understand, I don't understand the need 
to get rid of all the negative to believe in the good, right? Like, I don't get that. Yeah. Because you're not getting the whole picture. No. It's kind of like, and it's, it's not the same thing at all, but in the 12-step fellowships, there's people who have a tendency of just being Pollyanna about it, right? And taking out, uh, and because they don't understand any different. Yeah. Like in terms of the, the queer, the two-spirit and being queer and all those things. Yeah. Um, we're running into that in the rooms, right? Sure. Like as a queer man, we're yeah. running into people who are 100% hateful. Yeah. They're not even quiet about it, right? Yeah. Like, you know, I should talk about voices. Uh, mm -hmm. So when uh, the Black Lives Matter movement in Toronto stopped the pride mm -hmm. parade to say, look, you guys are all racist. Yeah. Um, similar conversations happen nationally. And in mm -hmm. Calgary, we uh, decided we were going to get together. Now, at that time, I was advocating about missing and murdered Indigenous women girls mm -hmm. and um, trying to explain to people that includes the two-spirit because it's gendered violence. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are like, what is this straight, cis, Indigenous woman in our circles for? Mm -hmm. So a woman and a native like two things, two strikes against me already, mm -hmm. right? Like, because there's so much hate against Indigenous women. Mm -hmm. And then me talking about missing and murdered Indigenous two-spirit, mm -hmm. they didn't see the correlation because they didn't understand it at the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, trying to talk about that was really, really difficult, except for the two-spirit in the room. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it was so emotionally and racially draining for both me and the two-spirit in the room because mm. we're talking to a bunch of like, you know, really anti-indigenous, biased, queer mm. community who are like, so you guys exist? And it's like, yep, we exist. Well, why don't you guys pick yourself up from your bootstraps? Well, and so we would educate for free. Really? Give, oh yeah, it was like, People actually said those words and shit. Oh my god! I mean, I know people are hateful. Like, no, seriously. If I, if you and I were to walk into any community right now, and introduce ourselves, and I, I said I was indigenous, people would be like, "Really? Guarantee you will see that come from people." Mm -hmm. And it, it is so disappointing because yeah. it's not just that I exist. It's that then that means they know not just nothing but so much misinformation yeah. that this person will be nothing but harmful to be around mm -hmm. me, my community, and definitely my family. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I, it just hurts me so much. It yeah. hurts me so much to know that that just is still so, you know, and this is, we're not talking about the history anymore, right? We're just no, talking we're talking about, about now. right now. Like, yeah. our premier does not um, believe Indian residential school trauma, right? Like, she... I knew Point that was blank denies saying, right? it, right? Our previous premier, the first bill he put in was an anti-indigenous bill, right? So, like, it is so clearly, like, somebody said, you know, we need to move forward together. I said, okay, you change the anti-indigenous laws, and then we can. But mm -hmm. until you do that, yeah. we still are under a genocide. Mm -hmm. And so, like, like, that's how brainwashed Canadians mm. are about Indigenous people. They don't even know there are anti-Indigenous laws against us. Yeah. yeah. And I, rec I recommend, because I read this when I was visiting Trina out in the Okanagan, actually, was the Truth and Reconciliation Report. Yeah. Um, blew my mind. Yeah. That these things were laws. Well, just to give this your listeners, drives me crazy. <laughs> like, a, an idea, there are, like, seven volumes. Yeah. And, like, we had to take over a year going through all the volumes. Oh, of I didn't read all the volumes, yeah. Exactly, yeah. right? So um, when the 215 came out in Canloops, and people were like, oh, my God, I'm so sad. I had no idea. What that said to me was I didn't pick up the easy summary of the 94 Calls mm -hmm. to Action where there's a whole section on missing children and on mark graves. Mm -hmm. And so... I was totally gaslit. I was mad at the world because I'm like, how can you not know this? Yeah. Because you refuse to read those 94 calls mm -hmm. to action. And I had people point blank lie to my face. And I can tell when people talk to me if mm -hmm. they're lying to me um, well, about reading those 94 calls yeah. to action because they'll be like, oh, but I read those. I'm like, but did you? If, you, yeah. if this is a shock to you, then why are you surprised? Right? Mm -hmm. So it was just so insulting, infuriating, mm -hmm. but, you know, here we are. So, and we have yeah. tons more to do. 
So for folks who don't know, long before the 215, mm -hmm. many of the nations had strategic plans that they had given to the government that this is the amount of estimated um, you know, burial sites we think we have. These are the amount of missing children we think we have. This is the amount of money we need to investigate it, and it's sap. Mm -hmm. Then 215, and it was like all of a sudden, mm -hmm. it was like those plans were being yeah. approved across the country. Of course. So it's, it's really, really sad that people don't mm. understand the gravity of it. And, yeah. and to even in the face of all this new information, to deny the gravity of it. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I just um, don't even bother talking to those people because that's a waste of my time. It's like yeah. talking to a Holocaust survivor or a Holocaust denier. It's oh. like, right, like, how do I even engage with you? Like, yeah. if you refuse to see outside that bubble. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a, it'd be impossible to even have a conversation. Yeah. 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 So I, I don't even bother because. You know, I can only work with people who are willing. Mm -hmm. So like my book club, uh, we have a meeting on Monday. We're reading Five uh, Little Indians by Michelle Good. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we'll be focused on the last part of the MMIW. So we, we did the TRC mm -hmm. and then we were doing the inquiry and we're just at the end of the inquiry, um, the two volumes as okay. well. So, you know, that's, it's taken some time. We're getting no there. Yeah. That's heavy lifting. Well, yeah. but people, they want to know, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. You know, <coughs> I find it hard to believe that people didn't know about the children, and and I didn't know anything specific. But I've worked on with humans for almost thirty years, yeah. And I'm a hundred percent. I was a hundred percent certain they were eventually going to find bodies. Oh yeah, like a hundred percent certain. There was no question. Yeah. The way the church and the government treated indigenous people, there's no question about it. Yeah. Um. You know, I heard that the. Uh, I shouldn't just stop there because even back then the population treated indigenous people like that too. Oh right. Well. Like today, overall, yeah. overwhelming. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um. So today there is a, a movie called uh, Bones of Crows, and okay. it was actually done by indigenous people. Right so it's not the uh, Pollyanna. Oh, we're the RCMP. Mm -hmm. Can we take our child? Sure, RCMP. We're only going to do it if you say yes. Yeah, no, it's because we're the RCMP. Right. It's really <laughs> gritty and uh, really triggering for Indigenous people. Yeah. But for non-Indigenous, I think it's maybe a small sliver of what our truth, our, our truth is, and mm -hmm. our reality. So I, I'd highly recommend that mm -hmm. not your non-Indigenous listeners go go see it. Okay. And for the Indigenous ones, make sure you have your support systems on hand mm -hmm. if you're going to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've seen the previews for it. It looks it looks amazing, like heavy. It's but intense. Yeah. 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 Right on. So. So so in a circular way, kind of circular. Yeah. <laughs> Two spirit and queer, and the drag stuff. Like, is this just another example of, like, people saying, because I remember back when I was young, homosexual men were pedophiles. Yeah. So that's what we were told. We were, like, gay men will yep. play with kids. That's not who played with me. Like, right. I'm not going to lie to you. That's not who abused me for right. 10 years. So right. it wasn't a gay man or gay men. Nope. It was straight men, uh, supposedly. And I don't, I obviously, I can't claim someone's outness, but sure. it wasn't a transgendered, and it certainly wasn't a transvestite. Right. In dra it wasn't a person in drag. Nope. Like, um, I, I don't know where this is coming from. Yeah. I, I honestly think that, you know, homophobia, transphobia, and hating women like that is all under the mm. umbrella of misogyny and gender mm. violence. And that's why, uh, from the queer community, I highly recommend reading the National Inquiry because mm -hmm. it's not just about missing women and girls. Yeah. It's about our Trans. two spirit yeah. and the solutions against gendered violence is mm -hmm. there and even for our, our uh, QT BIPOC so those who identify as queer transgender uh, brown indigenous black indigenous and uh, or a person of color mm -hmm. like the answers are there uh, mm -hmm. even the Truth and Reconciliation Commission um, speaks about anti-Indigenous training mm -hmm. throughout the entire volumes of it. Uh, Call to Action 57 is for all public servants. So if you, you know, and I, I remember when I was running or helping my friend run in the um, Calgary Klein and talking to the, the folks there and saying, you have to understand that just by wearing orange, just like when I wear red federally, mm -hmm. People see me as a public servant. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm mm -hmm. not paid by anybody, but mm -hmm. they see me as that. So when you don't know about Indigenous people, they assume the whole structure of the NDP is the same. 
So I said, are you sure you want the whole structure to be looked down upon because you don't know? Mm -hmm. So really trying to encourage people to understand if you don't work mm -hmm. on your anti-racism training, like this is really going to hurt your community. And I would say the same thing about the queer community, mm -hmm. right? Uh, even in the queer community, especially Calgary, we had typically white men running Calgary Pride when it yeah. was volunteer only. Yeah. And, and no so wonder it got so siloed and racist. So right? siloed, yeah. right? So there was so much so that even the trans and dykes had their own march separate trans from... Trans and dykes. Yep, because <laughs> they were so ostracized mm -hmm. by these white males. Yep. Now bring in the, the lens of racism, right? So if you're black, if you're indigenous, if you're a person of color, you're not accepted. Like, it wasn't that long ago, and I would argue probably still today, you can be on Tinder and go uh, swipe, like, no natives, no Asians, no blacks. Like, that was part of the app. That's how bad the racism was in the queer community. Wow. If Canadian queers would read the National Inquiry, it would actually help them. I, I, I mentioned it, and, we, and talking about it, it's like it's such a hard... I imagine Pride has been a really tough nut to crack, right? Because some of the people were probably there since the beginning of Pride, mm -hmm. like, or still clinging to the old ideas of Pride, right? Which would have been a mixed bag of racism and bigotry, right? Because most of us, whoever we are as humans, are unaware of our bigotry until... Do you want some more? Yeah, I'm I really sorry. I got you. No, no, please. The National Inquiry really is talking about racism and gender violence. Mm -hmm. So had the Canadian queers read the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, they would already be part there, mm -hmm. but they didn't read either. Yeah. And it's so ironic because both would help all of Canada, mm -hmm. but Canadians see it as, a, as an othered issue. Yeah. Oh, that's their problem. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you are the reason that this is a problem. Yeah. So I wish that Canadians would see that they are part of the solution. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because we are. We 100% yeah. are. Because yeah. if, like, if we came, if all of those people who find themselves in a place where there's, they're not safe, right? Whether it's queer, uh, BIPOC, and, and all kinds of different people, right? If we all got together, yeah. we could make a real good vote. Yep. Right? Like we could make a real good, if we were able to get our bullshit out of the way and our differences and focus on the things that we have experienced similarly yes. and some of those similar things we carry in our heart, yes. which is like equality and stuff like that, where yep. people are treated the same no matter what. Yep. I know that's idealistic. I get it. But but it isn't, you know. Yeah, because it's got to be possible. Exactly. It is there. Mm. And uh, so that's that's the irony when people say, well, what, what can I do? And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, have you read the Truth and Reconciliation yeah. Commission report? Have you read the National Inquiry report? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, it's like, then start there. Yeah. And then right away it's this idea, because they're so colonized in their thinking mm -hmm. that, well, if I start a nonprofit, then... And it's like, well, then you're speaking over Indigenous voices mm -hmm. and you're not understanding the problem. Yeah. And, and that's still their go-to as colonized people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's done in a way that appeals to colonization, right? So if yeah. you're hip to being colonized and it's okay for you that you're a colonizer, all the power to you, right? You right. wouldn't even think about it. Right, yeah. as opposed to supporting you mm -hmm. know, a youth program for Indigenous people that's Indigenous-led. Yeah as opposed to supporting your local nation. Like we have a mm. by-election happening in Calgary Heritage. You know where the border is? Sutina. That's the border, Yeah. right? Like there's still that segregation. Mm -hmm. So um, that bigger picture, I wish people seen that. Like mm -hmm. you would be willing to go like as Forest Lawn to Bowness and have mm -hmm. like a community event. Why isn't the Calgary Heritage wanting to do community events with Sutina? Mm -hmm. Right, Sutina's definitely extended that olive yeah. branch many times, mm -hmm. and you know have open to the public all sorts of things. Yeah. <clears throat> so the like Canadians need to see they mm -hmm. are the problem and the solution, mm -hmm. and the sooner they get on board with like understanding these things, yeah. then the sooner it'll get fixed. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah, I I would honestly if. If every person who's never read the Truth and Reconciliation Report read it, like just if everybody did, if they just read it, they would have a new understanding of how our government 
treated indigenous people from the beginning of time here yes. in Canada for yes. our government, right? And that is so much knowledge to shift, yeah. right? And I, it's hard. I get it. Like when those when we started finding the 215 came out in Kamloops and then like dominoes, right? Yep. And then it was exactly happened, exactly as I knew it would happen. It went away. Yeah. Right? It went away. Where is it? Yeah. Where are we? Yeah. Right? Like for six months, we hear about it every day. Yeah. And then we hear nothing about it. Yeah. Right? That is part of our problem, yes. right? Is because we let these things go away while we're focused on other bullshit. Yeah. Right? Well, while focusing on a lie about folks in drag right, God, preying right. on children. Yeah. Because, like, that's the distraction to yeah. keep them from the truth. That reminds me, that that's, that just popped into my head. Do you remember, you remember the show Reefer Madness? Exactly like right? that. Exactly what it sounds like. It's like we are going to demonize these folks so bad yes. that even the nicest of humans yeah. are going to be like, not you. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, get away from me. Yep. Oh, why do we do that? Oh, you know, and, and it's, it's deep-rooted. So yeah. there's that anti-Indigenous bias, but there's mm. also that anti-Black oh, yeah. uh, bias. And my husband and I, we had a, a friend that even pointed this out to us in, I don't know, the 90s or early 2000s, where it was like, here's the Calgary Sun, and on the front was a white guy who won a bronze Olympic medal. Mm -hmm. And on page, like, 19 was a Black guy who won gold. Wow. Right? Yeah. So we should be amplifying him because he won gold, mm. but he's black. So we have to put him deep into mm. the paper as opposed to this white guy on the front. Because we won't sell copy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So like it, it's, it's so deep ingrained. And, mm. and like I grew up watching Arnold Schwarzenegger movies and, you know, they, uh, the Muslims were really demonized in mm -hmm. all of those movies, yeah. right? And, and anyone foreign and such. So Not just know. demonized, but idiotized, idiot, yes. idiot whatever yeah. the word is I'm looking for, made yeah. to look like idiots, right? Yeah, like they're not smart, they always get foiled. Absolutely. Right? They're always the enemy, too. Right? Yeah. Right, and so, like, you can imagine my horror watching my anti-Russian like who I thought was way too propagandized here about communism, mm -hmm. watching my military grandfather shift to pro-Russia. Wow. And then he died. And I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. So that's how deep that propaganda mm -hmm. can really yeah. make you hate someone to make you love somebody, yeah. right? Like it, it can be done. Mm -hmm. So, and for the queer community, obviously they've always been demonized mm -hmm. um, in a Christian uh, society. So yeah. it, unfortunately it's uh, just a perpetuation of that because our, mm -hmm. our two spirit were really like hidden after mm -hmm. the newcomers came. It would have there. to be. Yeah. 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 So that's I, one more reason to hate, right? Right, so we're seeing a real resurgence mm -hmm. of people identifying who they are, and mm -hmm. you know what? As I a, love it. You, well, as an indigenous woman, I'm at high risk oh. for being discriminated against mm -hmm. and being murdered, whether it's by the actual institutions or whether it's just by an average Canadian. Mm -hmm. So, as a result, you know, like I know. It doesn't matter how loud and proud I am mm -hmm. or how meek and small I am. Yeah. Either way, I'm at high risk, yeah. right? And I'm like, well, if I have to go out, then it's going to be advocating for the next generation. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing is it's that it's a bigger responsibility than that. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my great-grandparents, my grandparents, my mother, like th these generations survived mm -hmm. horrible atrocities. The least I can do is honor mm -hmm. the, that legacy and hopefully change it so that the next generation has it a little better. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I appreciate all the yeah. work you do. Oh. Um, so I don't know if we can keep this next part on, on the recording, but I wanted to talk to you about this, and I have a feeling that it'll be okay. Um, so as you know, I'm a chaplain with CPS, yes. right? And that has been a struggle for me yeah. for the last couple of years. Like yes. it's been a struggle, um, and I haven't been back there in a, yeah. couple, in a few months. Sure. Um, because I don't know how I feel about it. Like, yeah. I, and to be honest, I don't know if I will go back. Like, Fair. I'm really on that. And it's weird because I was thinking about this. I'm like, the hard stuff is over. Sure. Right? Like, the hard work is over. But when you mentioned the fatigue stuff, yeah. that's what I feel yeah. whenever I think about going back, yeah. going on site. It's <clears throat> like I feel this fatigue set in where, sure. shit, I'm going to have to be on guard. Yeah. 
right? Even though I know the people I can trust in there and all that kind of stuff, sure. I just, I don't feel safe with everybody. Yep. Right? And I, I think it, that's hard for me to say out loud. Sure. But I really don't. Yeah. Right? And that's why I haven't gone back. Yeah. Part of it's because of my dad passing, of dad yeah. passing and everything. But that too is a part of that, yeah. right? Is because my dad was wearing a rainbow bracelet by the time he passed away. Yeah. Right? Like he had one that he was wear for me. And um, that, I never thought that would happen. Right. Right? So anyway, this whole thing has been tricky for me because of all the work we've done trying to make it okay for people to be queer. Yeah. And having said that out loud just now, saying make it okay for people to be queer, that sucks. Yeah. That fucking sucks that yeah. we have to make it okay for people to be queer and the fact that it's not okay. Yeah. That there's still enough pushback. I can't even imagine what it's like to be a, a black person, indigenous, or a person of color and be queer. Right. Like to be too spirited, I just can't imagine it because it's bad enough just being queer. Yeah. And, you know, since I've been more visibly queer, yeah. like it's been more, obviously I'm experiencing more of that, that pushback, right, sure. from people. Yeah. I don't quite understand it because I'm not asking them for anything. Right. So I'm not sure why they're giving me pushback. Isn't it incredible how <laughs> yeah. asking for equity elicits so much anger, hate, and bigotry. So much hate. Like, it, it's incredible, because I, obviously I experienced that as yeah. a woman, as yep. an indigenous person, and I'm like, so me existing is a threat to you, why? Right? Yeah. It's like, where's yeah. the threat? Right? And, you know, like, it's so crazy, and I don't, again, I don't know, like, what decision I'll inevitably make, but, yeah. like, I want to try to be there, because I, I don't want to give up, right? Like, I don't want to, I want to be there so that if someone else is there going, I'm really scared of those people, like, yeah. uh, I don't know, I guess I'm trying to be there for someone else. I, I don't even know who they are. Sure. Right? Yep. Um, because there were people there for me, you know? Oh, yeah. And yeah. it's like, now, I mean, now there are people there for me. Like, sure. I, I, all I had to do was look for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In all honesty, all I had to do was look. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was really good people all around. Um, but I don't know that it's a safe place yet. Yeah. Right? I just don't. And I don't know what your feelings are in that organization and all that. And we won't have to get into that, obviously. Yeah. Because um, we both, I believe this anyway, I sense that we both have some sort of desire to see that place grow and change. Me, I, I do. Right? Like, uh, for me, just as you know that there are closeted queers, yeah. I know there are closeted indigenous people yeah. there. And, uh, and, and that's heartbreaking. Yeah. Because um, I remember once having a friend, and I just told the family, "Yep, I'm Italian, just to make it easy, right?" Yeah. Like, so like, "Yep, that's why my skin's so dark, and I don't want to have these conversations, right?" So, um, and I know that there are people that have to do that within mm. the service as well about being Indigenous. Yeah. But then oh, there are a lot of white passing, like Métis mm -hmm. and such, that are in there. Yeah. They get to hear the awfulness, right? So. Um, Anyway, I, I would love to see there'd be no murdering of Indigenous people by the police. Mm -hmm. So I feel I have a responsibility mm -hmm. to try, right? And just mm -hmm. like you where you found a few folks that are, are open, mm -hmm. I have a few folks that are open too. Yeah. That said, you know, um, there was a wonderful police officer. Her name was Cindy Provo, mm -hmm. and she has since retired. And she's Blackfoot from Bagani, and uh, now she's a counselor mm. at Bagani. And uh, I have nothing but admiration, respect, and love for her. And uh, she doesn't see herself as an elder, but to, uh, to me, I yeah. see her as somebody who I, I look up too. to. I see her as that too. Yeah. Sure. So, and she works so hard within the Calgary police to, uh, you know, give them a teepee that was properly mm. done with protocols from the Blackfoot Confederacy. And, uh, you know, try to bring in po positive policies for Indigenous people. Mm -hmm. um, so much education that she did for, for that team. <clears throat> so anyway, um, then there was a shift in diversity, right? Mm -hmm. So like the old guard uh, came in a new guard. And just recently, that new guard all got promoted and, and now there's another guard. Mm -hmm. So I've met some of the new folks and ironically, from the old guard of Cindy Provo, there's at least one guy over there now. And so Cindy Provo worked directly with Sean Shu. Mm. Sean Shu was part of the diversity team in that era. Okay. Yeah. So 
hats off to Cindy Provo for putting up with that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how she did it. Well, I'll be honest with you. I don't know how, I don't know why women still marry men at all. Like, you know, um, I joking, I joke about this all the time, I'm especially not with other yeah. women, because um, <laughs> like a lot of women in my life now are yeah. lesbian or bisexual. And uh, for me, I always joke, you know, I wish I could not be attracted to men. <laughs> I wish, because like, I they're so you. shitty. They're so shitty to right? us as women. But I obviously have a good one mm -hmm. that isn't so bad. So Well, because with great beard comes great responsibility. Obviously, obviously. So, you know, but, you know, it's a really sad reality mm -hmm. that my daughter hasn't been exposed to domestic violence through um, the example of her parents. Mm -hmm. But I have to really guard her when it comes to my family mm -hmm. because I don't want her exposed to domestic violence. Yeah. But it's so rampant mm -hmm. everywhere. And, uh, you know, uh, intimate, intimate partner violence is uh, an issue within the queer community, too. Very much so. Um, you know, so I, I'm not going to discount that she may end, may end up encountering that later in her life. Yeah. Or their life. Okay, so mm -hmm. for everybody listening, I have misgendered my, my daughter. Uh, they don't mind me using terms like daughter, but the validation that comes from they, them. Yeah. Back to the two-spirit component. Yeah. For folks who don't know, prior to colonialism, we never had she and he. It was only they, them. Mm -hmm. So even for me, I should be honoring myself and my culture yeah. by not using she, her, by using they, them. They, them, yeah. Um, but for, for my daughter, they, they prefer they, them, yeah. right? So when, and when you do use they, them, the validation mm -hmm. that comes through, it's so painfully obvious, yeah. right? So, um, and what a what a what a thing for people to fight against, right? Making people feel comfortable with who they are, just because they choose to use they or them, this like ancient dogmatic gendered system that obviously comes from the church, right? Like some variation yeah. of the church back in the day, I'm sure. A hundred percent. Right. Yep. Men and women only. Yep. And that's that. Right. Yeah. And and that's not reality. And that's never it's not. been reality. We are human beings, mm -hmm. and God made transgender people. God made lesbians. God Everybody. made gay people. Mm -hmm. So the idea that you know that they're mm -hmm. they're deviant is yeah. is really the problem I, here. And I think it speaks to their lack of faith. That's what I think oh, it is. Oh yeah, good call. I think it's a lack of faith because yeah. if you don't, if you believe in some God, yeah, that God created all, yeah, then you're saying that God made mistakes, right? Is that you're suggesting that? And that's right. why, like, we're the problem? Because if you don't conform, you're kicked out kind of thing? Uh -huh. I get it now. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm going to share something with you that made me and my daughter just laugh and giggle. We were, I was on Twitter, and uh, somebody, a, a God-fearing Christian, went to see Lady Gaga and had a sign telling her that she's going to hell. And Lady Gaga stopped and looked over went over, gave her a smack on the lips, and said, you know, you're coming with me. <laughs> I love it. Right? Because at the end of the day, <laughs> if you truly really believe in Christianity and that Jesus died for all sins, yeah. like what makes your sins somehow better than my yeah. sin or this sin? And it's like... Well, and now she's kissed a, a girl, so she's going to go to hell for sure. Right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Good for her. Yeah. So anyway, I asked my daughter, did you want to watch this? And they were like, oh, yeah. And then the, the look of happiness mm -hmm. on their face. So I, I got to do a shout out to yeah. Lady Gaga for that. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Good honor. Like it's it, because it is. And, and the more <laughs> like the more open I am about being queer, the more you, we, I just experience for other people too, right? And seeing it happen and like it was so dumb. We posted a we posted a poster. And of course, I won't say any names or nothing like that. We posted a poster about our new <coughs> meeting that we started. It's a new queer meeting, AA meeting. Um, and those of us who are queer, we don't have to wonder why we need AA meetings that are queer, mm -hmm. because we know that other AA meetings are oftentimes <coughs> very bigoted and very homophobic <coughs> and also misogynistic. Right? Yes. Like those yes. things go hand in hand. Like they don't necessarily have to, but they seem to. Yeah. Right. Agreed. Misogyny and and homophobia and all that kind of stuff. However. It is a little different when it's female. Yeah. For some because it's still sexualized, right? Like so it's it's yep. it's fetishized, I guess. For the for the 
homophobic men who are homophobic against gay men or queer men, but accepting of queer women because they're together and it's fetishized, there's just such a difference when all of a sudden you notice it's a queer man right, and not a woman. Mm. And then they're like, oh, well, we don't want to hear about that. We don't want to hear about your life. We just want you to sit there and shut up. <coughs> you could be queer, but you got to shut up. Right? Right. Like, when you and I know from Mending Broken Hearts, mm -hmm. the root of addiction is from trauma. Mm -hmm. And if your trauma is directly from gendered violence, mm -hmm. you need to talk about it. Yeah. And so we need places, right? And that's why we created these, these there's meetings are created. And actually we're going to, we're going to, I get it. Yeah, we're going to a drag uh, fundraiser tonight for a 12-step fellowship, which I've never thought I would see. Which is a wonderful thing. Right? I'm really happy for, like, there's a, a new um, group called Stonewall YYC. Yeah, Stonewall Recovery. Right? So oh. I, I want that to succeed. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the people in charge, are they queer in charge? Yeah. Yeah? Yep. Oh, fantastic. No, I'm... I'm so happy that we're starting to be honest about that mm -hmm. because just as there is a disproportionate amount of Indigenous people mm -hmm. homeless, there is a disproportionate amount of the queer community yeah. homeless from rejection of community. Yep. And when we talk about the interviolence <clears throat> amongst queer community, we're talking about people who have been traumatized their whole life for the most part, mm -hmm. getting together with other traumatized humans. Yep. It's going to be very difficult. And I've experienced this with, with, with gay men yep. in the last year and a half, more predominantly than ever before, sure. where there is still so much self-hatred. Yep. Right? Like, and I, Don't get me wrong. I know I got lots. Sure, I got sure. a ball of self-hatred in me I carry with me everywhere <laughs> I go to keep me on my toes. Um, but it, it behooves me to be aware of that, right, mm -hmm. when I'm involved with other people, any person, of course. But if you're not in a recovery space, maybe you're not given the language to talk about these things yep. because a part of our trauma is being told to shut up. Right. Right. So like, we, we turtle. We do. Yeah. And so some of these men and women who are now out yeah. have been turtling so long, yeah. every time they, we feel threatened, we react. Yeah. And folks who don't have coping, which I am a very privileged human. I am a white man in Canada and I am sure. under 50. Yeah. So I'm pretty privileged. Sure. My upbringing was 100% privileged. So I don't know where I was going with that, but it's like, oh yeah, it was because when, when I don't react that way, it's because I was taught. Yep. I was literally given skills yep. to inter, um, move, mingle with other humans. Right. Many people were not. Yep. They were not given those skills. Mm -hmm. They were not given the idea that, uh, of respect for others because they were never respected. Right. right? See, a part of me, this is why I went super straight for so long, right, was because yeah. I was banking on my privilege, right? And in hindsight, I know exactly what I was doing, especially mm -hmm. now that I'm visibly queer. I know exactly what I was hiding from, Yeah. right? And, yeah. and now I've just got to suck it up, yeah. right? Because this is the result of, in my life anyway, of just saying, okay, yeah, I've been privileged in a bubble, pretty much. Sure. Two parents who love me. Yeah. Got to work with my dad, yeah. right? Like we were best friends. Like that's yeah. a privilege. That's not the way it is normally, right? right? And um, and I know that when I say privilege, I don't mean I don't work hard. It's not of what course, I'm saying. Of course. But that's not what we mean by that, right? Mm -hmm. My understanding of that, that's not what it means. What it means is, though, is that I could work half as hard as someone who is of color and get the same job. Yeah. And I have absolutely experienced that throughout my life, yeah. without question. Yeah, right? I think of my brother who's struggling. Yeah. You know, um, soon as he shows up for the interview really he, yeah because he's so visibly indigenous yeah. that I have my dad's light eyes mm -hmm. but he is dark mm -hmm. he has dark eyes black hair you know he but he, he's a good looking man like he's not a he's a good looking man he's still native yeah it's, right yeah so I that, guess it doesn't matter I just right yeah I shouldn't say that I'm like oh he's a good looking man I didn't mean it like that yeah yeah <laughs> well but you know at the end of the day like uh I, I wish that people understood showing up for the interview mm -hmm. can be the difference. So I think uh, like folks in the disability community, as well as the QT BIPOC, mm -hmm. many of them try to do the, you know, phone banking type yeah. of um, jobs, because if you have to be face to face with people, that instant bias against mm -hmm. you, right? Really? Yeah, it's just so instant. Yeah. And, uh, and it's so like, 
infuriating. Mm -hmm. But I'm, the other part is this, especially the strong conservatives who are white, straight, who think, well, the economy. Okay, let's, let's just focus on the economy. If you want to make more money and you treat women equally, mm -hmm. queer people equally, and uh, POC equally, mm -hmm. you make more money. Yep. So it is actually in your financial economic best interest mm -hmm. for no other reason than yeah. to treat people equally, mm -hmm. to make everybody else money mm -hmm. in an economy that only cares about money. Yeah. So, you know, for, for that reason alone, you mm -hmm. should get conservatives on side. Yeah, <clears throat> you would think. And the reason I mentioned your brother being a good-looking man, yeah. I read something about good-looking people getting jobs. Yeah, right? pretty pure privilege. Uh, yeah, pretty privilege. Yeah, um, so. but, but obviously, because he's indigenous, that cancels out that like potential yep. upside, yep. right? Like, I didn't even think of that until you were saying it. Like, yeah. What a mind-blowing, right. mind-blowing, yeah. Right, Ugh. So, you know, I, I, it is heartbreaking to me watching him struggle, knowing, oh, shit. yeah, it's yeah. basically the color of his skin. But I know that already because, yeah. like, I see it with all of my other, you know, friends and family and, and that that are not white, right? Yeah. Um, it's not from a lack of working hard enough. Mm -hmm. It's most people I know, especially in the area that I'm in, like we're talking about people who work multiple jobs yeah. to make ends meet. You know, yeah. who's the first people you let go? Your POCs, your indigenous population, your mm -hmm. queer community. That's why this pinkwashing is so frustrating in the queer community. Mm -hmm. So for folks who don't know what pinkwashing is, it's when a you know corporation will like slap a rainbow yeah. on their merch or their logo and say we are pro queer, mm -hmm. but then when push comes to shove, like we're seeing in the states and Target, mm -hmm. they're like, well, but you know we don't really want to do it so loud anymore, and then they quit. But worse, if you look at their demographics of employees, mm -hmm. they don't keep their queer community. They don't. So. It is lies, right? Yeah. And and a lot of people say the same thing about the environment and greenwashing, mm -hmm. where it's yeah. like, but you look at your actual record, you're not really green, mm -hmm. so you might think you're green and say yeah. you're green and market you're green, but you're not really green. Yeah, you can market yourself green, I think, if you just recycle. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so like, there's a lot of dynamic there mm -hmm. of, like, basically lying for marketing yeah. and image purposes, and it's really disappointing because... It is disappointing. Yeah. And it's really, what's really funny though is when they try this marketing stuff and then they get the pushback and then they quit really quick, like the Budweiser with that. Right. I was like, I'm like, man, people who drink beer pay way too much attention to this stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But that was so funny to me because it's like, well, you're either with us or you're not with us. Yeah. Like, and this, the days of being able to be partially in, those are over. Yeah. Right. Not our fault. Like, I, I don't want to have it just one or two ways. Right. That's not up to me. As far as I'm concerned, everyone is free to be who they are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In so far as we don't hurt others. You right. Know? Yeah. Right. But that includes the police and other organizations as well. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the police, I just wanted to leave it on this section of it. Sure. I, the, one of the only reasons I'm still there, actually, it's the only reason I'm still even a part of the service is because I believe yeah. they are trying to change. Yeah, I, I should, right. um, I, I'm going to honor that actually. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, is, it hurts me and mm -hmm. I want to frame it to your listeners this way. The fact that I get up and engage with Canadians, non-Indigenous and the police shows my love mm -hmm. and my hope for a better Canada, mm -hmm. right? There are some really awful people in everything. Yeah including the police yeah. and the idea of working with the very people that would murder me in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, just recently, my daughter confided that um, some of her friend group got stopped by the police while they were walking mm -hmm. and I'm infuriated about it, but they don't know their rights mm -hmm. and their parents may or may not know, so mm -hmm. I can't really yeah. go out there and <laughs> say something, but at the same time, my hope is, okay, well, they had an interaction and weren't murdered, mm -hmm. so that's good. Now, if we can build on that, yeah. right, and, and build on that, and build on that. Mm -hmm. So I have 231 calls to justice, 
and 94 calls to action that mm -hmm. are my guide in life. And if I'm going to honor the survivors, I have to try. Mm -hmm. And if, if they close that door, that's on them. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think of like Derry um, at, the, at the graduating ceremony mm -hmm. and some of the, the incredible folks there that, um, you know, every recruit uh, class that I've been privileged to be mm -hmm. at they go into it now smudged mm -hmm. and knowing that there are indigenous elders mm -hmm. and people that want to help them. They haven't reached out, yeah. but they know that they may have Métis, mm -hmm. Inuit, or First Nation co-workers that are not safe enough to tell them yet, mm -hmm. right? So at least the new recruits are being told yeah. this as they go into their graduation ceremony. That's good. Right? Yeah. Um, it's, and it's that's progress. It's taken a lot of work. Yeah. Right? To smudge inside the middle Mawada armory. That took years and years off the years. backs of Cindy Provo and even before I was before just going to mention her, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, and, and the wonderful officers that they have today mm. that are Indigenous. Yeah. So I, I just want to honor them, mm -hmm. too, because they are trying to fight the good fight yep. inside the service. And if I can support them in any mm -hmm. capacity, I will. Yeah. Um, you know, and that bigger picture is that we have to move forward together mm -hmm. until the laws catch up. That's on politicians, which is why I'm part of the Liberal Party. But at the community level, we all have to try mm -hmm. and work together. Now, when they get tired of me, they get tired of me and they'll have to put up with my daughter. But right. that bigger picture is, is that we, we have to try. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and the other part that they're doing that's really positive, so um, they have an elder that comes in as part of the uh, recruit class mm -hmm. ceremony. They have indigenous education that's meaningful. Oh, so much so that the rest of the country wants to seal the work of uh, this Bow Valley instructor who's indigenous who mm -hmm. really put together this curriculum. Excellent. Yeah, it's, so, it's such a good curriculum. Progress. <clears throat> I tell them about missing and murdered Indigenous mm -hmm. women. They have other speakers that come in as well. And then, uh, you know, that bigger picture that they're, they're trying to hire um, staff who are civilian, mm -hmm. but are helping the service with liaisoning, yeah. right? And then uh, now the National Inquiry told them they should have done this already, as did the TRC. Mm -hmm. They didn't, whatever. Here, we're getting somewhere, yeah. right? And, and when... What happens for folks who don't know is that, you know, when an indigenous person is murdered, the police don't come in and treat indigenous families the way my husband was treated by the RCMP when his father passed away. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a murder, it was just a passing, he passed. And the, the officer who told us was in tears. Mm -hmm. He said, I've just lost my dad. And, so, mm -hmm. like, everybody was crying, knowing what had happened. And, um, but for Indigenous families, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. And until that changes, I have an obligation to show up yeah. if they ask me. If they don't ask me, I don't show yeah. up. Yeah. I appreciate that. And yeah. I, that's, I think that's why I'm still there, too. I, yeah. I just have an obligation, I think, at this point. Yeah. Not to them so much, because I believe in what they're trying to do. Yes. I, I don't know how long it'll take or or whether they'll do it perfectly the first time. Yeah. I, I just believe they're trying, yeah. right? And uh, that doesn't take away from the shitty ones, right? Like, no. And those are know, still out there. Let's, let, I'm going to give a shout out to the police commission. Mm -hmm. um, so we have uh, Norla, Marilyn North Pagan, yeah. who is the first Indigenous woman police commissioner nationally. Fantastic. Right? And then uh, Jody Stonehouse, she became one, and now mm -hmm. she's an MLA. Um, but we also have... Uh, uh, Heather Campbell, who is a black uh, commissioner mm -hmm. for the Calgary Police Service. And then we had Courtney Wol Wolcott for a while, who is a Calgary counselor, uh, who is the second black one, but mm -hmm. the first black male. And uh, he was on the police commission as the uh, Calgary counselor for, for a while. So like, there has been movement mm -hmm. in that concept of anti-racism and indigenous education. Mm -hmm. and. I would be really poorly remiss as a treaty partner, <clears throat> acknowledging I'm on Blackfoot territory, mm -hmm. 
if I didn't honor Marilyn North Pega and what she tells and educates everybody on is that the Brave Dog Society is a part of the Blackfoot Confederacy. Mm -hmm. They were the police of before col colonization. Yeah. So um, she gets very offended and hurt when non-Indigenous Canadians, even if they're POC, mm -hmm. say, abolish the police, because mm -hmm. she's like, well, then you're saying abolish the Brave Dog um, Society that's been here since mm -hmm. the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. And so she honors um, not just her culture, but like the land mm -hmm. and Blackfoot tradition as well as she served in the military, yeah. right? So she, she has a deep respect for the uniform. And, you know... And she obviously loves Canada. Obviously. Like, obviously. Well, but so do most Indigenous people, mm -hmm. even though Canada's been so awful to us. Yeah, I, so, meant, so, I meant the right? land, so, like... Right, because yeah. this is our territory. This mm -hmm. is our land. This, we have take, it's in our blood to take care of this mm -hmm. land where it's not in the blood of other people to come. And you can tell. Right? So so <laughs> here we are trying, like, getting pulled in all these different directions, mm -hmm. trying to make this work, this relationship mm -hmm. work, and honoring our ancestors who signed those treaties in good faith. Mm -hmm. Right? So I always encourage Canadians who who don't know you are a treaty partner. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you have an obligation to honor the treaty. And in Treaty 7 territory and Blackfoot territory, we have the Brave Dog Society, mm -hmm. and that's the first policing, mm -hmm. right? And now we have the Blood Tribe, and we have the Sutina Police. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I try to honor the, that bigger picture. And, and, I mean, there are times that I'm just like, oh, God, when it comes to some society of people in, in our society, non-Indigenous people in our society, that I'm like, I really want to call the cops on you because they're being awful in mm -hmm. some capacity, right? But, you know, we, we have to figure out how to live together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish the police wouldn't stop a bunch of teenage kids that are Indigenous teenage kids mm -hmm. that are just going to a movie, but they do. You know, when clearly there's something wrong over here, like mm -hmm. there's domestic violence calls, right? Like. Why are you wasting your time talking to some teenage kids going mm -hmm. to a movie with popcorn in their hand and candy in their pocket? Like, my husband and I grew up in a time, and I'm not joking, my 15-year-old, I think of what we were doing when we were 15, mm -hmm. and I'm like, praise Jesus that my <laughs> daughter is not doing what we were doing when we were 15, mm -hmm. right? And I think of the kids that, that she's growing up with right now that are such good kids, but if you have such negative interactions by police, by mm -hmm. society, at a certain point you're like, what the hell? Like, my brother has every reason to not conform to society mm -hmm. and to do so-called illegal or shady things because this society is not giving him a fair shake. Mm -hmm. They're not giving him a job. They're not, mm -hmm. you know, including him the way they include non-Indigenous people. Yeah. He has every reason to join a gang or do mm -hmm. something else, but he isn't. He's still trying to do the, you know, straight lace conservative mm -hmm. uh, work that uh, just go get a job and, and you know, yeah. do the nine to five. And he has every reason not to, frankly. Mm -hmm. So I wish Canada would see that they have an obligation as treaty partners, mm -hmm. but just as human beings to treat people equally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wish we could instill that somehow. Right? Yeah. yeah. I, what, what time are we at? Hour and 20? Mm. How are you feeling? Good? I can keep talking to you. I just know that... Uh, I love it. Yeah. I, I feel great. I, um, I just don't want to tire you out. Like, the opposite, Dave. Excellent. Yeah, I want to hang out with you tonight at this, uh, at this fundraiser right too. Right on. But You're going to come with us or no? Well, I, I was going to... Yeah. yeah. So it's okay. We'll obviously, go. the allergy thing has yeah. been... But at the same time, like I want to devote time for other other questions or other mm. things that we're going to go to because... I think if it's okay, I would like to spend time at a fire with you guys at your house, if that's okay. 100%. That might be a, b a good time for then those questions because there's 100%. lots of questions, right? Yeah, so, 100%. Yeah. yeah, cool. Great. That'd be awesome. Right on. Well, I th Michelle, thank you so much. Uh, I could talk to you for, for a long time too. Right. Um, yeah, I'm glad you said that about the police service and about their, their units progressing right? Because yep. that's what I've seen too, right? <clears throat> like, and I'm not taking away from the shitty cops, like yep. shitty cops do shitty things. And to be honest with you, like, 
from the non-shitty cops that I know, they don't like the shitty cops either. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't, they don't do anyone any favors, right? Like, yeah, 100%. It's, it's not a... Okay, a I'm going to throw something at you to bring it back to politics. Okay, so. okay. Okay, so the UCP have decided they're going to impose mm. police commissioners that are not like elected, vetted or nothing. Really? Yeah. To change the dynamic because you know a Heather Campbell and a Marilyn North again, they're doing good work. Yeah, they are. And the conservatives, they don't like progress. Yeah. So there's one Interesting. big red flag there. And that's a that's a big, big red one. flag. Yeah. Right. So let let's be really mindful mm -hmm. of how all of the work that you and I have done mm -hmm. to make it more queer inclusive and indigenous inclusive, how it could be done like that, mm -hmm. right? Because they hired. Well, um, I don't do near as much work with it as you do, so. But still. I appreciate yeah, you putting me in that same that, category. No, I know you're doing good work there, and you know I I don't want to divulge on your podcast, mm. but I know what good work you've been doing. So. Thank you. That bigger picture that uh, that can be changed like that. Mm -hmm. The police act was amended, yep. so that in progress can be out, out the door. Mm -hmm. And then that bigger picture that if this concept that they tried to take take away some of the things that were mm -hmm. progressing and existing like you know the rcmp which is the jurisdiction of most of of alberta yeah. they have a lot of reports that they refuse to do a lot of work with mm -hmm. it comes to sexual harassment queer inclusion mm -hmm. domestic violence you know misogyny yeah. in general like internal all of, racism everything. all of yeah. the things right so like there's a lot of hard work to do. Mm -hmm. And that's why I encourage the, your listeners to yeah. understand that they actually have a role in all of this too, mm -hmm. right? So we have to be mindful that who we vote for, you know, pushing our MLAs to do mm -hmm. good things as opposed to mediocre. Yeah. I, I hate to say it, but some of the folks that you've elected are drunks, mm -hmm. really. Um, you know, been on pro-life boards sexual harassers mm -hmm. they have an, a bad history yeah and i don't know why as liberals and ndpers we don't like try to showcase that more mm -hmm. but we're more focused on positive politics yeah. and, and trying to move forward on policy but that negative propaganda against us combined with mm -hmm. erasing this history of you know anti-indigenous mm -hmm. bias and all of this like it it's heartbreaking. It, it is, is heartbreaking. heartbreaking. It yeah. is such a mount, excuse me, a mountain to, to walk up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, my I'm, hope is is that people start to, you know, that people say that they're all for free speech. Mm -hmm. I, I always challenge them. Well, if you're in Alberta, have you read a single Kevin Taft book? And they go, Well, who is Kevin Taft? And I'll say, Well, he was the official leader of the Liberal Party when Ralph Klein was in charge, and we have right now, um, it's almost impossible to get a FOIP request done. Mm -hmm. And there's a Global Mail initiative called Secret Canada. And in, right in their stats, they say, Alberta will not get back to us. So we are at the bottom of the list. Mm -hmm. So if you're for accountability and transparency, which you claim for Trudeau, mm -hmm. yeah. for Notley, why aren't you demanding it of your conservatives? Mm -hmm. Why aren't you demanding it of your police force? Why aren't you doing more? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it's fa it's fascinating. Yeah. And like, it's so intricate and how all these things are connected, right? Like the yeah. police commission here to politics in Edmonton, like the, and for, for folks to not think they're connected, it's, it's, I gotta be honest with you. You've got to think about it like, like a family, like you have generations going into politics, generations yes. going into law enforcement. So there's these family connections, and so these things stay strong yes. unless they change. Right. Right. And so I, I, it hit me when you're talking about it in terms of just the police service here. Yeah. That's one small organization in Alberta. The last police right? recruit that I went to, one of the recruits had um, a mother and a father and a sibling that were all in. So there's four cops mm -hmm. from one family yeah. in in the Calgary police. And it's like, it is so clear in front of us. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I was so happy to see this woman, but I watched her mom, who's clearly close to retirement, mm -hmm. really snub her nose when our um, mayor went up to speak. Mm -hmm. 
I was so offended by the look that she gave mm -hmm. that I knew that's deep anti-blackness because Courtney Wolcott was the um, acting mayor, mm -hmm. so the mayor always goes up and speak, and it was it was Courtney, and Courtney talked about Martin Luther King, and the eye roll and the look she gave and the sneer, I was like, here I was all happy that this woman got into this family mm -hmm. and the mom was clearly bigoted racist mm -hmm. against our own person and that yeah. was a cop in a senior position because mm -hmm. for folks who don't know when a person gets recruited and there's any anyone in the family whether they're from freaking ontario mm -hmm. they get to come dressed up in their uniform yeah. and give their badge to their new recruit mm -hmm. to the to the new graduate so we got to watch this whole family go up and it was like, oh, I'm so mm -hmm. happy for this woman. We have more women. And then I watched later after mm -hmm. Courtney spoke on behalf of the mayor, this anti-blackness that came through this. And I was like, Ooh, I hope I never meet this lady in a dark alley alone mm -hmm. ever. Yeah, that stuff is creepy. It, it was. Especially it, if you're putting like connecting dots in your brain, right? You're like, oh, that's four four of them and yep. they could have like four each because you know if mom feels that way oh yeah yeah it's it's embedded. well and it's tough it's embedded right like it's it gets embedded. embedded it was embedded in their grandparents or great grandparents and that's where it all solidified right mm -hmm. it's uh yeah i mean i i guess the only the reason i have hope for the policing is because i don't i don't think abolishing it would work Right? Like no. I, I just don't we believe. We need some sort of policing. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's bullying and shaming in the sense that mm -hmm. when the 215 came out, yeah. the Calgary Board of Education was finally shamed into changing Langevin School's name, mm -hmm. even though a decade prior yeah. they had been being pushed on it. Mm -hmm. Right? And they did everything to push that down. Mm -hmm. But when 215 came, they were finally shamed. They had to do it. They had no choice. Right? And so that, that is like society kind of policing them to some mm -hmm. extent. But these are like the deepest conservative folks that are excited to put on the blue badge for mm -hmm. either provincial or federal. Right? Yeah. And this is their, their, oh, I have experience as a school trustee. Mm -hmm. Right? Funny thing about that, about having like the law and order government, yeah. is that folks forget, the people who vote these folks in, they forget that it doesn't apply to you. Like right. when you break the law, you're going to get arrested. Right. And if you vote for police on every corner, you're still going to get in trouble when you do shit wrong. Yep. They're not going to care who you voted for. Yep. They're not going to say, oh, are you UCP? Yeah. And maybe they will at some point, yep. and then you can get off scot-free maybe. Yeah. Um, but then we'll have chips in our heads, and Darcy's laughing at me because I'm starting to get crazy. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> no, it's such a pleasure talking about you that. Too. I know that the Calgary police are trying to move forward, and yeah. as long as they want me to come with them, I will. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's my answer too, right? Is yeah. like as long as they let me walk in the building, yeah. my ID still works. I guess I'll still go, yeah, right? Yeah. To try to like be there as it changes too, you know? Because it, I, yeah. I think it's going to be scary for lots of people, right? I mean, I, I can't imagine being a, a new constable and being gay, yeah. or being queer, or being two spirited. You're indigenous and you're queer, like. Yep. Are you going to talk about it? Probably not. Right. Right. Like, yeah. Well, I don't and then know. the worst is I, I have met people of color who are queer, who are cops, and they have so much internalized hate. Yeah. They do everything they can to be the. Uh, there's a really um, good song that came out 25 years after N.W.A. came out that talked about you know black cop beating for the white cop, mm -hmm. right? And so you see that. Yeah. And that made me sad when yeah. I witnessed it. Yeah. And that would make that that makes me sad too. And I know that it's as a person who absolutely hid their their queerness for a good portion of their life. Like yeah. I, I just know how devastating it is for the person, right? Because that person is suffering. Yes. Like, and that's probably why we got to stay and keep going right? if they let us come. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. You know, if you plant an idea and I plant an idea, mm. by the time another person plants the idea, maybe. And the good news is, there's lots of like you mentioned. <coughs> the, there's good people inside the diversity unit. There's good people inside the service that are, are absolutely making it possible for these things to keep moving forward. <coughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Because if it wasn't for, the one thing I've noticed about the police service, if it's not, if sworn members aren't in on it, like if they're not pushing it, it ain't gonna happen. Yes. Agreed. Right? Yep. So if, there, if it's a civilian member, it doesn't matter. It's got to be a sworn member, 
yep. like 100%. pushing it. And seeing that push is really impressive. Yeah. Really, and, and I see it yeah. especially with the recu recruiting class yep. and in the diversity. Um, although the new diversity, I'm really looking forward to meeting them and yep. seeing what we can do there. Yeah, they're new. They're all new, or yeah, that's what, okay. that's the cycle of the Calgary Police is yeah. that they force out the diversity team once they've made all their connections to start all over again. Mm -hmm. I know it's a tricky thing. How do you, like, how do you have enough <clears throat> new blood with the old blood, but without, yeah, without triggering some sort of abandoning ship? I know. <laughs> Well, Michelle, thank you so much. No, thanks for having me. I appreciate oh, it. Dave. My pleasure. Well, folks, I hope you love that as much as I love doing it with Dave. Thank you again, Dave, for having me on. Uh, for folks who are interested in our book club, we meet on the every month on the second Monday uh, from 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time. So if you're interested, let me know and I'll send you the link. Still have this cough. So July 10th is coming up, uh, the final report for MMIW. We're doing pages 219 to 349. Um, August, our Voice of Fire by Brandy Morin. September 11th is going to be the Pathways of Justice, the 113 Pathways to Justice that the uh, government of Alberta put together on their working group of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Uh, August 9th, Cree Lawyer, uh, Harold Johnston's book, Peace and Good Order, A Case for Indigenous Justice. In November, we're going to do a report to guide the implementation of a national action plan on violence against women and gendered violence, <sighs> because implementing the MMIW report just wasn't something that Canadians would be willing to do, I guess. And then December 11th, Making Space for Indigenous Feminism, edited by Joyce Green. I'm proud that this podcast has given solutions and included cultural safety training and cultural first aid and all of them to create a safer space for Indigenous people of color, those with disabilities, and to us LGBTQ to speak. Thank you to Cheryl Ward, Chelsea Branch, and Alicia, Alicia Friedkin of heretohelp.bc.ca. If you type in what is Indigenous cultural safety, you will find tons of resources. Their work and those cultural action tools are available, so please support an Indigenous work like this as part of your reconciliation work and settler understanding. I'm just lucky enough to highlight and repeat it here. Internalized racism and lateral violence is another form of violence Indigenous and marginalized people face by the structure of racism imposed on these lands. So if you go to racialequitytools.org, uh, Donna Bevins put together some wonderful resource files on what is internalized racism. Please feel free to give her a donation as well for the great work that she does. Uh, do's and don'ts for bystander intervention by American Friends Service Committee. So afsc.org. And I wish anyone that followed me on social media would watch the anti-racism organizational lead for the city of Calgary, giving the internal ARAC committee a presentation on the journey of becoming an anti-racism leader. And those who follow me on social media, one, you could Google it, but two, you'll find the YouTube link on my social media. Um, again, Calgary or YYC Black Lives Matter activists, uh, Taylor McNally and Adora Newfor are being targeted uh, by the legal and justice system. So please donate. Uh, there's a link included for folks to learn more about that or to donate to. Uh, Indigenous have been talking about these issues, sharing our traumas in reports, commission, and public hearings, just so it can be regularly disregarded. No more. Honor our words. Honor the treaties. Listen to politicians and their policies and platforms. If they don't recognize the marginalized in their budget with gender equity plus, if they are cutting violence prevention programs and services, indigenous education, uterus health choices, gay straight alliances, a lack of human rights for migrants, immigrants, folks with disabilities, know that your vote to that party directly negatively impacts marginalized people. Demand that they implement the Truth and Reconciliation Commission calls to action, the recommendations of the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples, the multiple reports about child welfare reform and violence prevention, and now 231 calls to justice from the National Inquiry on Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women, Girls, and Two-Spirit. Provincially, the uh, Alberta government 
created these 113 pathways to justice. So I sure hope that all the blue voters hold your blue MLAs to account on it. And uh, municipally, we have the White Goose Flying Report. Denying these reports is a form of abuse called gaslighting. Our people are experiencing extreme racism in every institution with multiple reports that say the same thing. Demand change from election platforms and politicians. If they don't understand colonialism, racism, privilege, sexism, gendered violence, they literally have zero business running. Should be understood by all parties, local politicians, community organizations, sports clubs, everything. Uh, Google articles on how non-Indigenous Canadians can become allies because there's lots of them. Uh, Stephanie Harp and I had an emergency podcast in the hopes that we could get our allies to write and do more action on some of the crises that we are facing. Uh, sign up at aboriginalalert.ca to find out about Indigenous people missing in your area. You can also go to the Missing Children Society of Canada, where they have an app that you can download. Uh, we really talked about um, the statement that came out from women homelessness.ca. It's called the demand for urgent action to protect the lives of Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit and gender diverse people experiencing homelessness. And, uh, you know, I was just on the sea train and I saw a person with a missing digit and it really impacted me because I know that incredible cold snap we had really, um, it killed people as well as um, dismembered them. And we live in a society that seems to be really okay with police reading, raiding, um, you know, homelessness camps. And um, I'm, I'm so incredibly disappointed with how many people go to police instead of seeing that these are social services that should be properly funded, not uh, systemically underfunded and cut down to the point that they are basically useless in so many ways. So anyway... Um, this is for all you conservatives who only give a shit about money. Again, this is costing you more money in the long run. It's not fiscally responsible to uh, put money in this way. We are losing lives. We are losing people who could be contributing members to society if we invested in, in houselessness. But I guess people really like the status quo and like people being homeless and breaking into their houses and stealing their property to try to pawn it so that they can try to live a small life of, of food and addiction. Like this is pathetic. And I, I just shame on all of us for letting it get to this point. Anyway, if you know anybody who's using substances, please don't use alone. If you are using a loan, you can make a safety plan. There's the National Overdose Response Service at 1-888-688-NORS. They also have an app called DORS, and there's a lifeguard app as well. We have no stats to prove whether or not this helps in, in any capacity, but for some reason, Canada seems to be okay with so many people dying from a uh, lack of clean supply. So here we are. If you're experiencing emotional distress after anything we talked about today and want to talk, you can call the First Nation and Inuit Hope for Wellness Helpline at 855-242-3310. It is open 24 hours um, a day, seven days a week. You can also go to hopeforwellness.ca where they have a little text box. If more related to missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit, you can call 844-413-6649. It is toll-free, national, and providing support that requires emotional assistance related to missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. For non-Indigenous, there is distress center lines in your area, usually a functioning 211, or you can call 833-456-4566 or text at 45645. Uh, you can also go to crisisservicescanada.ca. Uh, 60 Scoop Society of Alberta is ssisa.ca. Uh, here in Calgary, we just had the next planning meeting for an October gathering. So I hope that uh, if you are a 60 Scoop survivor, you consider coming for healing, uh, no matter how angry you might feel. Indian Residential School Survivor Family Hotline is 866-925-4419. Kids Help Phone 
1-800-668-6868. The Native Youth Crisis Hotline is 877-209-1266. The following are two SLGBTQ crisis supports. You can go to lifevoice.ca. Um, the Trevor Project, you could donate to them, uh, 877-330-6366 for a trans lifeline for our youth, 866-844-7386. And you can go to lifevoice.ca for more crisis supports um, to help you based on what you're going through. Violence is my everyday reality. Every Indigenous generation has faced it. This is self-care how I take my power back. That's why I started this podcast, to try to educate settlers without interruption on what racism actually is, what their anti-Indigenous biases, what tone policing, leadership shaming, gaslighting questions are, because people don't want to hear Indigenous opinion. They sure want to tell us theirs, even if they don't know anything about us. Colonialism, the constant surveillance of our people, our protests, our children, our vigils, and our rights. I and many others share info on microaggressions daily, so it's unacceptable to say them anymore. Learn about being trauma-informed. Folks like me are dealing with internalized racism and gatekeeping that, you know, folks live off the status quo, people who are so in their trauma that they stop people from doing the work and deplete personal resources. Internal and external racism is an everyday reality for me and other equity-seeking groups. Masi Cho to my ancestors, to my granny, my mom, what strength looks like through your example, to my dad for teaching me to be strong and blunt, my stepmom for showing me what a proud culture is through her Austrian family and teaching me to be a second generation Calgarian. Thank you to my husband, Darcy, big Buffalo rock man, uh, for producing and editing the show on top of being my husband, my childhood friend, the father of our child and my support down the journey of the red road. He has witnessed decades of racism and sexism. And to our child, Thunderpipe Necklace Woman, who we are blessed to learn from daily, and we are honored you chose us. You give me daily accountability to be a better and stronger person. My hope is my daughter and my family will be proud in the future, trying to discuss these present day issues in a way that they all understand down the road. My Patreon account is Native Calgarian, where you can pledge and support. Thank you, previous donors, for showing your support. If you value listening or watching and can afford to give, thank you. To those who cannot afford to give, I'd love to hear from you at nativeyyc at gmail.com where you can send in your comments or your questions. I also have a YouTube channel that you can go and subscribe. Go to nativecalgarian.com for the latest podcasts and pin posts on social media. Um, I also just want to say thank you to everybody who uh, helped me go in May to Ottawa. It is greatly appreciated. I want to end by giving side eye to those Calgary rabbits. You're lucky I'm not tradish. And my beautiful cousin would respond, are you being my dish? Thank you folks for listening.